All right, so we're diving in now to kind of uh, this article by Andrew Altman, and you can see that there's a link to it uh, via BB Learn, the PDF form uh, in this folder. So I highly recommend kind of pulling that up and following along. We're not going to go through all of it. Uh, I'm just going to highlight some of the major takeaways that I think are, are important for Altman's argument here. And again, kind of leave you all to, to maybe read the rest of the article or think more about this on your own. Um, and it should be noted, I mean, again, one of my interests here in offering this as a subject of consideration is that, again, it's so prevalent in society. And I mean, often we say that our society is highly sexualized and, you know, we see all these images, both of males and females. And, uh, and I mean, even what we're going to talk about today and, and this week and next week is going to, again, kind of relate back to all of the base work that we did last week on feminism. Okay, so we're see we're going to see a lot of kind of themes emerge. Um, we're going to see a lot of themes emerge that, that connect over the next couple of weeks. And pornography is kind of in the mix here, okay? And it's in the mix insofar as, as it allows us to, again, ask a lot of questions about um, sexual morality, about sexual identity, um, right? How one kind of like thinks of oneself as a sexual being, right? And, and again, kind of the um, limits or possibilities of one's expression of self in a sexual way, right? All of this kind of, again, wrapped up in, in maybe who it is we think we are, who it is we want to be. Um, and again, pornography is probably at play here in some capacity or another, okay? And it should be noted, I mean, there are a lot of scholars, both in psychology, sociology, uh, and philosophy that study kind of the effects of pornography, that study, um, you know, and our thinker on Wednesday is a feminist, and so she's going to think about pornography um, from, from a particular type of, of feminist lens, okay? Um, and so there's so many, actually, like, avenues to engage in this topic in a mature and... Um, mature and, and focused way, that it doesn't have to be, um, you know, something that's kind of like sheepish or in the dark. Like we can talk about this in a very um, um, mature way. Okay. And so this article that we're going to look at today is called The Right to Get Turned On, Pornography, Autonomy, and Equality. Okay. And what Altman is going to argue for here, and, and again, kind of keep paying attention to kind of like how I phrase things with regards to, you know, Altman advocates for, Altman says X, because those will in turn translate to test questions on May 8th. Okay? Um, and typically when we think about pornography and, and legally speaking, how pornography is often understood is in terms of like a free speech issue, okay? um, that the measurement of, of restricting pornography or allowing pornography is on the basis of one's access to free speech. Okay, and Altman makes mention of that. He says, okay, sure. Uh, but he says that he believes that the premise behind that debate is mistaken. While there are certain respects in which freedom of speech uh, is at stake in the matter of pornography, such freedoms are not the central liberty um, relevant to the issue. Okay, and you can see my notes here, and you can kind of like see what I highlight as we kind of like work through. But P1 and P2, that's premise one, premise two. Okay. Rather, Altman says, the right to pornography should be understood primarily as an element of another form of freedom, sexual autonomy. Individuals ought to have a broad liberty to define and enact their own sexuality. And persons who view pornography or make pornography, because he talks about that later in the article, uh, are exercising their sexual autonomy. And the debate over pornography should be seen from that standpoint of that liberty. Okay? So, like, even out of the gates, this is Altman's kind of base here, okay? And his base in thinking about sexual autonomy and one's right to pornography, right? And that's what he says. The right to pornography should be understood on the basis of one's sexual autonomy. And the way that he defines sexual autonomy is that individuals ought to have a broad liberty to define and enact their own sexuality. Okay? So if we have that like big statement that, that it's, you know, um, the liberty that we're focusing on is the liberty of, of sexual autonomy, individuals having the, um, individuals having, uh, the broad liberty to define and enact their own sexuality, whatever that may be. Okay? And Altman then takes the next step and says, and, right, those that view pornography, those that make pornography, are, 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 
um, doing so on the basis of their sexual autonomy. And so we can't, from like a um, you know, from a societal standpoint, um, disavow that. We have to kind of acknowledge that that is just somebody's choice in terms of how they are defining and enacting their sexual identity, their sexual autonomy. And he kind of goes on and makes this next claim here in this paragraph. When seen from such a standpoint, the claim that there's a right to pornography is analogous that there's a right to use contraceptives to engage in sexual relations outside of marriage and to engage in homosexual activity. Freedoms that protect sexually defining decisions get closer at the heart of the pornography issue than other freedoms uh, that protect speech and other activities. So what he's saying here is that if one chooses to use contraceptives, if one chooses to have sexual relations outside of kind of the heteronormative framework of marriage for the purposes of procreation, which we'll get to later, and if others, you know, don't even fit within the heteronormative framework, right, engage in homosexual activity, right, all of those things are sexually defining acts, right? And again, all of those uh, are uh, also, you know, present in society. So perhaps kind of thinking about the one's use of pornographic materials is analogous to those other kind of, um, uh, to those other sexually defining decisions, okay? We're going to keep trucking here in a second.